FOMO. My name's Patrick McGinnis, and I'll admit it, I have FOMO. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you do too. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing. If you learn to channel your FOMO productively, you can make the most of every opportunity while keeping your sanity in the process. This is FOMO Sapiens After Hours, the snackable show about how you can make FOMO a force for good. FOMO. FOMO. All right, everybody, welcome to After Hours. It's Monday, we're starting a new week, raring to go, and I'm coming in hot with some listener mail. I love listener mail. And in fact, this is kind of like a I don't even know. I'm going to use some calculus on you. It's a derivative listener mail because a couple weeks back, I answered a question by listener Shane Doman about how to network during a pandemic. He'd moved to a new city. He's trying to figure things out. And a lot of people have written me back. And I also connected with Rasheen Carbon. His Twitter handle is at Rasheen Carbon. Check it out, actually. It's a pretty good Twitter feed. And Rasheen had the following question for me. Hi, Patrick. I decided to take your advice about networking during the pandemic and I'm trying to reach out to people via email and LinkedIn. Can you please help me with some tips on how to write better cold emails and LinkedIn connection requests? Thanks, love the show. Okay, this is a really important topic, one that I feel strongly about because there's some very naughty people out there. None of you, I'm sure, but there are naughty people who do cold outreach on LinkedIn or via email, and they put bad things into the world, and it's just, It's unnecessary. And I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking about when I say that, okay? So I'm pretty widely connected on LinkedIn. If if people connect to me, I always accept them because I think it's a great way to meet new people, but also it's easy to connect with people. You can find their contact information. So I'm not... I guess I'm a little promiscuous on LinkedIn, I guess you could say, and I, and I don't think that's a bad thing, but the problem is you connect somebody, they send you a nice note, I'd love to connect with you, and you look at them and they look interesting, it's fine, you connect. And then you get the old note about three days later that says how honored they are to connect with you. And, and that's very nice, but when you get it from one third of the people who write you, you start to realize it's a little bit of a game. And then you get another LinkedIn message five days later that says that it's very important to this person that they deeply know the people in their LinkedIn network. And so they'd like to schedule a Zoom call with you. Now, who has time for that? Then they send another message three days later that asks kind of in a sad and hurt way, like, why haven't you responded to me yet? Oh, and by the way, will you buy this thing I'm selling? So it is a ploy. It's like this bad lead gen growth hacking that somebody told them was a good idea. And frankly, it doesn't work because once you've seen this once or twice, you realize that it's basically a ploy. And when you've seen it 473 times, which I got to think I have at this point, and many of you have as well, you just get annoyed. So I, I just get a lot of feelings about that. And so today... I want to take that on because cold calling is good. There's nothing wrong with cold calling. It is necessary. And in fact, in a lot of the work that I've done in the past, I talk about the fact that cold calling is something I do that other people do, and you can be successful, but you got to have a strategy and you've got to be substantial. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So how do you cold call? Well, here are the five things that are really important. Number one, Only contact somebody for legitimate reasons, ideally because you can ask them to do something for you that is low friction for them or because you have something of value that they need and want. What I mean by that is, say you need a piece of advice, you're trying to meet somebody to specifically research a topic and you wanna write an email or a LinkedIn and you say, you know what, I'm trying to learn about the industry you're in. Would you have 10 minutes to maybe respond to an email or could we have a call? You are giving them a specific reason that you need something. And if you make it easy for them to respond, there's nothing wrong with that. You're not hiding what you're trying to do like all those people I just talked about. And so I think that's a very fair thing to do. Second thing is that if you have something that you do wanna offer them and you think you actually have something they need, that's okay. But sort of just generically cold calling a bunch of people with your business plan without even knowing if they're investors, that is not an example of giving people something they need. So research these people and tailor your ask to them. Number two, 
you want to make people know that you're credible when you make the approach. So it's really important to tell them a little bit about yourself. Make sure you have a good LinkedIn profile or send them a website with your bio on the website. That's something I've talked about in the past is you make sure that there's a website, a place on the web where you have your bio and people can see how great you are. But you want to make sure that you are creating a little FOMO there, right? When somebody realizes how terrific you are, how you actually are credible, then they will be much more likely to respond because they don't want to miss out on the opportunity to meet you. And at the same time, if they don't respond to you, feel free to follow up. There's nothing wrong with being persistent. And in fact, what I like to do for somebody who maybe I'm not sure if they're going to respond is I like to combat their FOBO. They have a little FOBO, they're a little stuck. So I will say, listen, I'm going to contact you this one last time. If I don't hear back from you, I will not contact you again. Therefore, you know, if they don't respond, they're not interested. If they do respond, they just hadn't had that sort of trigger to respond. So think about how you can approach these people in a way that generates FOMO and FOBO and drives action. Number three, do not hyperbolize, please. Do not hyperbolize. When you make your LinkedIn profile, please do not say that you're a creative visionary unless you are the head of an ad agency. But for all the rest of us, talking about the fact you're a visionary leader, it just, it, it's, it, it, it hits your credibility because it just feels a little ridiculous. And in fact, most people I know who are very successful, they don't need to wear it on their sleeve. They let everything speak for itself. And so just thinking about how to position yourself so people take you seriously uh, rather than coming across a little bit comical can really enhance your response rate when you do a cold call. So that's really important. Next, proofread. And this is one that I've learned so many times the hard way. If you have typos, people think you're not for real. They think you're a bot. They think that you are untrustworthy. Make sure that everything you write is very well done and is succinct because, you know, people just don't have time to read anything these days. So keep it short, sweet, to the point, no typos. And finally, be persistent. There is nothing wrong with following up. In fact, I shouldn't say this, but oftentimes I'll get a first message from somebody. And then it's only when they follow up that I actually take the time to respond. If it's somebody who maybe isn't top of mind or I haven't met before or who's not offering me something I really want. And so if you need something and want something, go ahead and be persistent. And another great thing to do is engage with the people you're trying to connect with in other places. Maybe you follow them on Instagram, like some of their photos. Don't want to be a stalker. I'm not saying that, but just let them know that you appreciate them. And they'll be like, oh, that's right. I think I've heard of this person, or maybe I've seen their work, or maybe they ping me in another place. And so you're not so much of a cold call anymore. So that's really important. Now that we've got all that kind of sorted, there is one other thing I want to talk about today, which is when you ask somebody to make an intro for you. So we all know what it looks like. You get an email from a friend. Hey, do you know so-and-so? Would you mind making an introduction to me? And of course, we're happy to do it because, you know, that's what people do for each other. If you like somebody, you're happy to connect them. Maybe there's even something beneficial that'll come out of it and everybody will be very thankful or maybe even cut you in the deal. But here's the thing. When you ask somebody to send an email on for you. You've got to make it as easy for them as possible. That means sending a fresh email with exactly the information you need following the rules we just talked about with LinkedIn and then basically making it so easy that they can simply forward it on with a little note at the top. And it drives me crazy when I tell people this, like, just send me a note and I'll forward on. And then I get a response to our email chain that has 15 other emails on it. And like, I'm not going to erase that. You know, I am a busy guy. We're all busy people. I shouldn't have to do this work for you. So I actually wrote about this in chapter eight of the 10% Entrepreneur. And sometimes when I'm feeling a little cranky, I'll just say, hey, you know, if you wouldn't mind... <laughs> Chapter eight of the 10% Entrepreneur shows you how to do this. So before you send me an email, you know, just don't send me all this back and forth from the past. Just clean, fresh email, short and sweet, make it easy and I'll do it. And that is something that I think we should all encourage other people to do. Let's have better etiquette for responding and cold calling. All right. There's a lot of information there. As you can tell, this is a hot topic for me, a hot button topic and I want to thank Rasheen for the question. And if you have ideas or questions or your own way of doing this, please feel free to reach out to me at Let's Connect at PatrickMcGinnis.com, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, or on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis. I love hearing from you. And until next time, take care of yourselves, FOMO Sapiens. FOMO. Want more of FOMO Sapiens and After Hours? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis. <laughs>